Uh, very good morning to all present. Thank you very much for joining. And we will start uh, the session now. So before going into the presentation, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Shrikant. He is the founder and chairman of TMCQS, uh, one of the most like uh, sought after DMS solution when it comes to India and of course uh, the GCC region as well. So without taking much time, I will request Mr. Shrikant to go through the presentation and welcome to you all again. And please, if you have any question, please keep it up and we will start doing it. So I will give uh, the control. So you can start uh, Mr. Shrikant, please, from here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Abu. Uh, are you ready? Yeah. Thanks. Are you ready? <laughs> Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope uh, we are audible. Uh, I, myself and Kapil, uh, both of us will jointly do this presentation. And, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, thank you, uh, Abu, for arranging uh, this meeting. Uh, kindly uh, put your questions, comments on the chat box. If you have any, we'll be happy to take those questions. Uh, we'll try and keep some time towards the end of this presentation. Uh, let me share the screen. Um, so uh, this is a recent uh, 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 I, if anyone is not able to share the screen, kindly uh, do to uh, you know unmute themselves and let us know. Uh, so this is a recent uh, IDC report uh, which says that about 65% of the global GDP uh, will be part of the digitalized economy by 2022. Uh, what this essentially means is that um, companies like Amazon or Netflix or Uber these are the digitalized economy. These are the, these are the co companies who are driving the digital economy. The GDP portion of this piece of business is going to be 65% of the global GDP as per IDC. Currently, uh, I saw some reports which put this uh, number at about 15% or 20%. Some mm -hmm. countries uh, like in US and China probably are in a higher percentile. But overall, uh, even if uh, this percentage looks at about 20, 30 uh, percent by 2022, uh, we are looking at a huge uh, amount of digitalized economy going forward. So the question really is, uh, can we as an organization uh, be resilient to this kind of digital transformation as well as at the same time build a sustainable digital platform for your organization, uh, which is what we would like to discuss today, and the role of a document or a content or an information management system, and how that will help organizations to move towards this digital transformation. Essentially, the agenda of any digital transformation project should be to enable uh, or empower your employees in a better fashion uh, with more information, more sensible information, more relevant information, ability to engage with customers with, uh, in a better fashion, uh, with a more focused information. Likewise, a transformed product or a service and optimized uh, operations, overall leading to a cost reduction, uh, enhanced performance, Sparing resources can be put to more productive use. All of this should be the agenda of any digital transformation product. Unless the, the adoption of any technology or process leads to these measurable uh, end goals, uh, we are not focusing on the actual goals that you set out to achieve. The core to any digital transformation are two elements. One is the data which means the information that you have in your organization, which could be uh, the customer information, your financial information, the product information, and the content, 
uh, in terms of, let's say you have a, a CRM, which has all customer information, but what content do you have about that uh, information? So does, do you have the uh, hobbies of your customers, what they like to do, uh, what kind of person they are, how they interact with others, what do they like, what do they don't like? So those are the, the content or the information that would, that would drive uh, the, the ability of data and the ability of information that can then be used to empower your digital transformation journey. So, so this is overall uh, what uh, we feel uh, is should be goal or an agenda for digital transformation of your companies or, or your organizations. Um, any organization, when it grows, it grows through its own life cycle. You know, you may start a small office, so you have an MS office, Microsoft office, everyone has a Microsoft office. You have physical files, you have emails, uh, you slowly uh, have some kind of financial accounting package. Uh, maybe you have an enterprise resource planning software. Uh, you will end up having a CRM for customer management. You'll end up having a resources management system. Essentially, as an organization grows, uh, you start adding more applications, more systems, more software to meet those requirements. What happens is, uh, this is how we grew as well. So more companies may relate to this. As we keep on adding information, the, the, while you have data, which is sitting in each of these particular blocks, uh, the question is, are these data connected? Uh, <clears throat> whether we can actually derive information from this data? And how can we make this data more intelligent so that you can actually use it? Now, coming from a very, you know, uh, like a grammatical or, or a very, very specific uh, uh, theoretical standpoint, when data and content are put together, then you get information. And the intelligence comes from the ability to contextualize or relate the content with each other making the information more intelligent. Just like you know, when we were young, we went to colleges and schools to learn. Likewise, machines are also dumb machines. Unless you train them with the data and the content and the ability to relate to itself, it is not going to become intelligent by itself. So any intelligent information actually drives um, or, or is driven by the data that you, you, you train that. So essentially, uh, unless you connect all these various disparate systems in your organization and bring the information into one consolidated, uh, let's say, hub or, or a warehouse, a digital warehouse or a vault, or whatever you want to call it, and layer that with technologies which will try and understand this information, able to relate that information, at that point in time is when the information will become more intelligent. Just like you have to train people to understand information, one needs to train the data and the machines to be able to relate to each other to, to make it more intelligent. Once you have that connected information, connected infrastructure, you are then achieved the first uh, step of uh, you know, going uh, to, to get your information in a manner which can be used and can be more useful to take intelligent decisions. This is where uh, what we feel, uh, what can connect all these disparate systems is the platform uh, where the document management system or an intelligent document management system or a content management system comes into play, which can actually connect all these different disparate systems, bring information to one single platform and serve these particular systems as well with information. That is what uh, we hope to discuss today as to how uh, a document management system can connect and use the existing information with your all your existing application and make the information more intelligent and useful for you. So there are two questions, you know. First is how to get the information in one platform. And second is how to make that information more intelligent and work, work for you. Um, so this is what uh, we, we hope, uh, what the document management system will be able to provide to you. Um, I'm 
going to take a minute for you to just read this slide. Essentially, any digital transformation can be bucketed into four categories or four, uh, let's say, elements. The first element is you need the uh, basic toolkit. I mean, you have to empower your organization with certain applications or a certain certain uh, systems that will enable the dis digital transformation. So the first element is the digital information toolkit. Some of the elements within that is a cloud-based content management. So um, you would ask why cloud and why not on-prem? You're absolutely okay to go with on-prem. Uh, more and more of our customers are going to a cloud-based system uh, simply because it's, it's more secure. Uh, yeah, I am saying that. A cloud is more secure. Uh, after the whole ransomware uh, you know, attacks and, and experiences, uh, most of the cloud service provider, whether you go with the public cloud service provider or a private data center, most of them have anti-ransomware, ransomware protection, protected backups, disaster recovery, far more advanced. They are able to scale up the technology to a level that your data is secure, data can be protected, data can be made available. So more and more organizations in our experiences uh, experience are moving towards cloud-based solutioning. So uh, cloud content management, which includes things like document management system, uh, AI ML-based processing, robotic process automation, various elements of content management is, is part of what we call as the digital information toolkit. Collaboration is another tool that you need as part of this whole transformation experience. So whether it's internal collaboration with your own employees uh, or external with your stakeholders, it could be your, your shareholders, your customers, your vendors, suppliers, um, your consultants, your auditors, uh, your bankers. You can expose your collaboration tool to anyone internally or externally. And that is the power of ability to transform uh, your, your business. The third element which uh, we feel is more and more uh, making uh, becoming a game changer is a low-code or a no-code self-service platform as part of the whole solution. Essentially, it means, let's say you have a lot of vendors or customers. You can expose a self-service platform to your vendors so they can upload the invoices. They can you know, figure out where the invoice is. Has it been approved? Is there any issues with the prop? that particular invoice? Has it been processed? Has it been paid, not paid, so on and so forth? Um, that cuts down the, the, the journey of physical uh, document flowing, physical information flowing. At the same time, uh, it also brings data in a ready form to be integrated, which leads to the last point. Uh, any, any digital transformation element should be integration ready and should have toolkits which will enable migration of information from one platform to another. So this, I believe, is one of the more most critical area. Without this, your journey will not even start. So you should look for um, a, a base information toolkit that will enable the digital transformation. The second element is to identify what is driving your organization from a process standpoint. So identify those workflows which are critical to your core processes, which needs to be automated. Is it procure to pay? So is it your vendor payments, which is critical? So your vendors are happy, they supply on time. Is it your customers who needs to be serviced? Uh, is it your distributors, your channels? Wherever you feel that processes which are driving your organization. If you're a manufacturing company, uh, that could be a lot of processes which needs automation. So focus on those core processes which is driving your value and identify those. Likewise, uh, a high vo volume process can also bring down the, the, you know, the digital transformation experience. So also identify those processes which are high in volume. Here, you can actually really uh, create value uh, from the AIML robotic process automation, where you can actually realize the ability of technology to differentiate or add value by bringing down the human element in processing volumetric data. 
the, the last element is the intelligent capture. We will talk about that and we'll try and present uh, a few videos as to how um, uh, intelligence uh, can be applied to capture data from the source. The third and fourth uh, buckets uh, are, are essentially any transformation <clears throat> has to make sure that it is within the governance and the compliance aspects are, are, are meeting your local regulatory requirements. It is, it is tuned to the digital uh, record management requirements that you have, physical record management that you have, whatever compliances you need to take care of, they are met with, and any geographic specific applications, industry specific applications that you will need to comply with those uh, elements of governance as well as uh, compliance. So this is another element that you have to keep in mind with any transformation that you're not falling short. One, one very classic case in the compliance is data privacy. And we have seen a, a lot more focus on ability of applications to be ready with um, data privacy regulations. So in the connected world, in a global world today, Maybe you have one customer or one vendor who's in, in a geography where <clears throat> data compliance, data privacy compliance uh, is applicable. So if it's a European Union or it is a US geography or it's a Singapore, uh, all of these countries, uh, I'm not really uh, aware of uh, the regulations in Middle East, uh, but uh, all of these jurisdictions require uh, specific compliance with uh, what they call as the privacy laws, and this element of ability to demonstrate that you can control information. Uh, privacy is all about controlling information, ability to securely store and only give access to who needs access, and also the ability to <coughs> allow the end uh, private information and end customer or end the actual person whose information you're storing to forget that information. So you should have the ability to purge any information that is no longer required by your, uh, you know, uh, either by your organization or by your compliance requirements. So this is one very critical information or, or element uh, from a compliance standpoint. And, and again, uh, a document management system, an intelligent document management system enables such compliances as well, uh, which is why we were making this point that uh, any tool that you choose you need to ensure that uh, compliance is built into that. Uh, last last uh, bucket is ability to leverage uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and some of the areas where this can be applied are to recognize data, extract data, and standardize information. Uh, the other bucket, uh, which is the metadata management, which means that any information associated with the transaction. So metadata is nothing but a property of a particular document. Uh, let's say a customer name, uh, his email ID. These are all metadata relating to, let's say, uh, an, a customer agreement, the date of the agreement. These are all metadata. So how to intelligently manage the metadata is another uh, uh, you know, uh, element where AI ML can be used, where it will help in not only recognizing those elements, but also to move that information into a database for you to manage it. The last point is, is auto classification. It's essentially how to recognize a document and we'll show some of these cases over there and managing uh, personally identifiable information, the data privacy. So for example, you, you, you get a lot of invoices, you have a lot of shipping documents, um, you may get uh, uh, employee related information, now, you may have personally identifiable information sitting within those documents, like an email ID or a phone number, which can be associated with that particular person where that information is residing. Now, uh, there are technologies like AIML, which, uh, which helps you identify those documents which contain such information and flag it to your risk manager saying, hey, this document has certain personal information and it will need your attention, or it will auto classify that as a PII document and apply those security or other processes which needs to be associated with it. So these are the various elements that you should have uh, in any transformation project. And uh, uh, what we present to you today uh, as part of our uh, DMAX solution uh, has 
almost all these facilities or all these functional blocks which will help you or enable you uh, go through that transformation journey. Um, Blockchain management system is essentially uh, converging itself or transforming itself to becoming a more like an information management system. Uh, it has evolved from a, being a pure repository of digital information like st for storage and archival. It, another layer which got added is the productivity layer where you can collaborate, you can have workflows, uh, you can generate documents from a single platform, you can automate compliance. The, the new layer which got added is the intelligence layer where you can do auto classification, identify <coughs> personal information, recognize data, metadata, so on and so forth. The last bit is a platform. So any DMS or any intelligent DMS should be able to easily connect with other applications in your organization. It should be able to move information from one application layer to another application layer with ease. You should be able to use information in an intelligent manner and of course facilitate no code or absolutely low code uh, integration where you can leverage the information and bring uh, uh, a self-service kind of a platform which enables vendor engagement, customer engagement, uh, you know, shareholder engagement, so on and so forth. So this is, this is how the document management system has evolved over the last 20 years, 30 years to becoming more of an information management system and becoming more uh, platform neutral. Now I'm just going to uh, talk about what has actually uh, worked for our customers. This is actual user experiences where um, how uh, you know uh, companies have leveraged uh, a document management system where you get quick implementation, quick success, which can be replicated you know, across organization. So human resources is one such department which does not have a lot of interdependencies with other departments. It can be digitized on its own and it, it will give you immediate results. So in the pandemic uh, you know, days, uh, we saw a lot of digitalization projects on HR uh, because the, the information was sitting in silos, uh, in a lot of physical form, people are not able to access. You have to communicate with your employees. So there were a lot of challenges and we've implemented several uh, HR digitization projects in the last six months. Uh, and, and we've seen a lot of successful success stories coming out of it. Likewise, the other uh, department is legal and contracts department. Again, this is another department which does not have a lot of interdependencies with other functions and can be very quickly uh, you know, brought onto a digital transformation experience. So these are the first two bullets is what has worked much faster for organizations and they are able to then replicate that success for adoption into other departments. Collaboration and process automation is another classic area where you can very easily uh, you know, implement, uh, at least a collaboration piece is far more easily deployable uh, especially if your employees are working from home, you need the ability to access data, documents, information, talk to each other, work on the same document, um, do an automation, you know, uh, uh, authorize uh, invoices, authorize employee expense claims. All of that can be done through an intelligent document management system through this collaboration and workflow automation piece. Lastly, we'll, we'll talk about uh, the, the how integration with core systems and AI ML based data extraction has helped. Now these <clears throat> work faster in with those environments where the uh, complementary or the existing systems are integration friendly. Uh, you know, if, if you are working on legacy systems which are not integration friendly, then the entire experience is going to take much more time. So you need to dig a little deeper into understanding which integration can work quickly. Uh, with a lot of ease and uh, work towards those automation which are feasible. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about this uh, in, in the coming slides. Um, now, there are a lot of expectations from any application when it comes to an organization. So managing expectations is one of the most critical things uh, one has to do as a uh, you know process owner or a, or a new 
uh, change deployment or whatever you want to call it. And some of these elements are, are uh, highlighted here. So whatever transformation you go through, you need to realize that you will be faced with a lot of unstructured talking. So you will uh, experience that more and more information is coming uh, because you're going to add new vendors, you're going to add new employees, you're going to deal with new government, new agencies. So you will be encountered with more and more unstructured documents. So be prepared that uh, nothing happens magically. Uh, even Google took you know, millions and millions of data to, to come up with their Google Vision product, uh, which can recognize data. So any uh, AI ML or any intelligent solutions, uh, there will be challenges. Auto classification is another uh, expectation area where you know you expect tools to intelligently classify and recognize documents. Here again, uh, everything depends on how structured the underlying information is. So uh, you need to set your expectation and goal very clearly on where your pain points are today. So if you really need auto classification for certain document types, uh, which is very critical for your organization, uh, and then you apply AIML on those specific areas and train your application or, or your, your AI ML engine towards those. So we have seen um, <coughs> when you use auto classification uh, with, for a specific use case and start with that, it, it has much better chances of success. Likewise, PII uh, also depends on underlying information, all of these factors. Uh, the optical character recognition is a technology. Uh, likewise, intelligent character recognition is a technology which uh, recognizes uh, words uh, in a document, in a scanned image or a PDF, and converts into a text form. Uh, ICR is for handwriting uh, extraction. Both ICR and OCR has been there for, for the last decade or so and has, has evolved uh, quite a bit. And a lot of libraries do a good job. And uh, uh, But it all depends on the underlying document. So if you're going to get a shipping document with a lot of stamps over it, sig physical signatures all over it, a lot of disturbances or noises on the document, the likelihood of you know getting good results from those documents are, are not as high as a you know, a much more structured clean document. So, so these are basic uh, experiences. As far as handwriting is concerned, uh, cursive writing, uh, the technology is still not evolved. You need a lot of AI ML training for it to train to your specific users. So if, for example, let's take uh, hospitals, for example, where doctors are giving prescriptions. So there, uh, you know, the, the, the tools are far more uh, adaptable, but you still need to go through a learning curve, uh, the actual engine needs to go through a learning curve. So these are the various uh, experiences or expectations that you need to manage uh, when you go through any transformation project as to what is, uh, you know, uh, you have to set your goals for each of these elements and set the right expectation depending on your own organization's environment, uh, your, the way that you're getting the information and the quality of information. During the pandemic, uh, we, we've, we've seen, uh, you know, three or four things were driving uh, the digital adoption. One is enabling work from home. So simply you're missing documents and data to be able to uh, uh, work from. Um, so making data availability was, was a critical factor. Uh, able to connect with your ERPs or systems was another challenge. Uh, started looking at collaboration platforms, um, you know, uh, using Zooms and uh, video conferences became uh, the, the way of uh, working together. And automation, especially, you know, uh, expense claims, you still have you have compliances, you still have SLAs to meet, you still have contractual obligations to meet. So automation uh, of, of uh, data processing was another area where we saw a lot of transformation going through. So these are the various uh, you know, areas where uh, uh, you know, the pandemic uh, actually was a big uh, teacher, uh, teaching us uh, on, on, on becoming more resilient 
to such uh, disasters where we were not able to talk to each other, not able to go to office and access information. Um, so building a sustainable platform uh, will come back to how a DMS will help you do all of that. Um, so I'm going to also ask Kapil to come in at this point in time. Any successful digital transformation project, uh, you need to really pinpoint what is it that you want to achieve with that digital transformation. So identify specific needs that you want to achieve. Look at your current landscape. I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, in India, there are, there are companies who, who are still on Windows 7. You know, uh, so uh, they, they are operating in very remote locations, uh, even though they may be digitally well equipped. Uh, but still, uh, any transformation project, you need to see. You know, what is the ability of using these technology, and how um, agile your workforce is. Um, we have seen, you know, multinational companies or, um, you know, global companies, the ability to adapt new technologies is much higher than a, a company, uh, which is a local company who are confined to, you know, a fewer number of ERPs. So understanding your current landscape is very important before you start your journey of digital transformation. Of course, uh, it's a question of time and uh, planning it properly. Properly. Prior, prioritizing it, you know, what should actually uh, will give you easy success and going through a proper change management. Uh, changing behavior is one huge challenge in any digital transformation projects <coughs> and that has to be managed. So uh, I'm going to hand over to Kapil to talk about some of the actual customer experiences in this so, Kapil, over to you. Thank you so much, Rikant. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So I hope by now you would have definitely, you know, understood the, the crux of, you know, what sustainable digital infrastructure is and how, how what are the elements that goes into building one. Uh, just taking cue from what Srikant mentioned in the beginning that, you know, the entire thing that we are working on is collection of information. And as you would all agree that information is wealth. And this recent pandemic literally exposed everyone. Like, you know, not only it showed us how vulnerable humans are, but even the companies, you know, the actual health checkup of the companies was, was exposed to during this pandemic. And there were a lot of companies who crumbled down, to, you know, who literally faced a lot of issues. They had to shut down because of lack of proper channel, lack of having an organized information. I'll, I'll talk about one of the implementations that we did, you know, in one of the Middle East uh, countries. Uh, when, now, assume you have you have 25 to 26 locations across. Under each location, you have roughly around 13 departments, and each department are generating their own set of documents. Now, sitting at the corporate office, how would you manage it? Now, the, this particular company that I'm referring to, they were completely on manual process. They were relying on hard copies. Uh, they were relying on specific individuals to get to a particular document. If there were any correspondence or a bank guarantee or a letter that has been issued to something, they would just call up and ask that particular person. But during this time when there was entirely lockdown was there, definitely there were issues that they couldn't lay their hands on the information at the right time. So we identified the issues, how exactly this 22, uh, 26 locations could be brought online. So one of the areas that we worked on very closely with their team was to implement and get those 300 people who were working across these locations onto this particular platform. Three areas that we identified and met was A, the first one was access and controls. The very first one was obviously ability to give the control and access to respective individuals so that they are able to access their set of records only and not other set of records. Obviously, you may, uh, you know, uh, sort of counter attack and say, okay, we have Google Drive, Share Drives and such, uh, like, you know, platforms. But does it really control your data? Does it really give control at your level as to who is accessing your information? Who is actually, you know, if there's any data leakage that is happening, so who controls it? 
So do you have any platform to manage it? That was one of the areas that we closely worked with and identified as to across amongst these 300 people who should have those access. The second one definitely was that came from the management, the senior management and the chairman's board department was the ability to collaborate on multiple letters that they issue. Now you have multiple geographies. There are so many letters and correspondences that keep on coming in and that you send it. Now, obviously, these correspondences have a lot of interlinkages also to each other. So how do you link so much of information? How do you get the information which is coming and you are sending out from these 22 locations on a single platform? Merely storing it and dumping in a particular folder will not really help. So you need a collaboration feature which will actually enable and help you achieve that particular requirement. And the third and the most important part was obviously the ability to work from home. Now, assume an environment that where you're coming to office, you have ready access to physical files and, you know, you're working on it. But now cut to the current scenario where, you know, you are actually now since obviously working from home is going to be like is already become a new norm. How easy it is for me or for you to access the information that you could have accessed coming from office, like, you know, having a file. So replicating the actual physical environment that you have to a digital environment platform was one of the areas that we closely worked on. And in the span of around three to four months, we were able to get them online, get the entire implementation done for all those 26 locations, each 26 location having 13 departments. So you can roughly around assume 260 departments were brought online. And now even, you know, given any scenarios, they can definitely work on uh, without any kind of an issues that way. So this was one of the uh, like use, use cases that we had, you know, worked with. Similar case, uh, obviously we did with one of the companies uh, in India as well, where it not only 26, in fact, they had much larger, wider scope, uh, not only in India, but even across other locations. And even they had a similar requirement where uh, as a management, when you're traveling, how, you know, can you access information on the fly? Uh, you know, right now what happens is you send emails or you send hard copies for approvals. Can I directly access those information from my mobile? Can I approve that particular thing from my mobile and have a track of it? So those were some of the collaboration issues that earlier the client were facing but we helped them achieve this particular objective through uh, during this recent pandemic and we successfully closed on a lot of such implementations. Obviously, the implementation also, it's, it, when you talk about implementation, it's not just, you know, us coming and sitting with you and, you know, uh, doing the installation of the software. Implementation is a process. It, it's a process which is, it's a two-way process wherein not only us, but even the customer also gets involved gets a buy-in, gets see into what needs to be done. Merely we telling you this is how it's going to work will not really work. Obviously, there has to be a handshake. And that's where, you know, the companies like EMAC and Micro Center really help in streamlining your process, in helping you, in sitting with you and understanding your pain areas, your pain point, your current infrastructure and how we can modify it. Because let's agree to this fact that, you know, every two companies are different. We cannot apply, you know, what I've applied to this particular company to your company as well, because you would have certain other, you know, definitely different uh, infrastructure, different dependencies, different pain areas, different concerns. So we actually will sit with you, we'll chalk out a plan with you, we'll understand what are the issues that you're facing and how we can address each and every point out here. And that's how, you know, the successful implementations uh, can be achieved. <clears throat> Quickly on, you know, here we also talk about, uh, you know, build, people talk about going digital, uh, going green and all, but how to build that ecosystem? How do you achieve that particular objective? People really do not know what tools are available in the market, what are the processes that you need to follow. So this, this, this slide will actually help you get all the critical elements to achieve the core objective of going digital. So here there are two parts, components to it. One is a services part and the other one is a technology platform. <clears throat> so the services part essentially includes, it is a first step, obviously, where you have those physical documents available with you in hard copies. 
here you could have a data you know hard copies available for the last 7 years 10 years <clears throat> and even on a daily basis or a monthly basis you keep on getting such hard copies from the external parties so the core actual process of digitization can be carried out obviously we can help you with that work wherein we convert those hard copies to the soft copies and even data processing merely we have seen lot of companies who just scan the documents and then dump it in a folder there have been instances where we actually have to redo the work rework the entire thing because merely scanning will not really help you need to bring those scan copies to put to proper use by making it go through a data processing tools so we have various ways in which you know you can achieve those indexing uh, achieve those metadata tagging that can be done so that forms part of our services part which is a data processing and services the other one is a technology platform obviously again one part is where you scan the documents but uh, when you have you know tons of documents that are scanned again you need a robust system to back up that huge amount of data which is generated and also which will be generated on an incremental basis so that's where a robust a core engine like a document management system will come into picture which will archive which will store all your documents for searching and retrievability now here we are talking about digitizing the documents which are coming in from the you know from the external parties but the real process automation or the real digital transformation will happen only when you're actually eliminating the entire paperwork from your organization like the approvals we have seen lot of companies still take printouts still you know work on you know physical signatures now that entire thing can be brought onto a particular bpm tool or a process automation platform so that where a workflow engine will come into picture wherein on the top of dms we can layer a process automation tool where the actual workflow where the actual process approval can also happen uh, as i mentioned during this recent pandemic itself we have implemented several projects wherein you know the the companies actually had to migrate to a workflow platform so that normal approvals be it what invoice approval expense claim requisition any kind of an approval can be done through the application so you don't have to depend on hard copies or email using an our latest digital signature platform you can enable that as well and obviously you would have come across this buzzword you know ai ml and rpa so uh, this is something like robotic process automation or using ai ml artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies we actually can help and understand certain key areas you know where there are repetitive tasks which is happening and where we can cut down on that particular tat and optimize that process so there have been instances where we actually sit with you and i'll show you one of the processes one of the solutions also if uh, you know giving the time and work on it so this entire integrated approach actually makes a digital automation platform these are the element and various blocks which are there like hr finance legal so one the best part is one platform will meet the requirement of each and every department so you don't have to go for separate solutions for it one platform will cater to everything and as a senior management from the dashboard perspective you have single dashboard to give you the health check of your organization in terms of information i just uh, want to So these are some of our other clients you know some of the marquee clients that you you can say that we work with uh adidas is one of our uh, prim, uh, you know prime clients who, who obviously we are serving them in several countries including uh in ua and uh, they have been using uh, several of our uh, applications one of the key areas why they chose us is because of our ability to give them portal portal for vendors and even portal for employees so in, in fact uh, the one which is in uae there the vendors are able to upload the invoices directly onto the platform and the approval is happening directly from the application itself and also we have integrated with their core uh, erp so that the po generation happens over there and the data flows in over here so there is no manual intervention in terms of you know uh, relying on the hard copy of those invoices or even checking the you know the balance okay how many invoices can be raised against a po uh, the first level of check is getting done by our application itself if the invoice is greater than the po less than the po and all those rules and validations have already been set 
So that, that was one of the reasons why they went ahead with us. And in fact, in India also, we've given them a portal wherein all the finance, HR, and other departments are making use of it. <clears throat> so, and these are some of the other clients, as you can see, we serve across verticals. So it's not only one vertical, but we it, uh, real estate, infra, media communication, bank, and BFC. So we have all the use cases available. And obviously, using uh, 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 this platform of digital infrastructure, you can achieve definitely how control over your confidential information that you're having it. Uh, Shrikan spoke about sensitive information or personally identifiable information, which is nowadays it's very critical. You know, every information of yours, be it a bank, uh, be it any kind of a unique number or your mobile number, everything is sensitive. So how is it that you can control the entire thing? You can manage it from the application. Uh, since the information is readily available, the productivity of the employee increases many fold. That and definitely, I'm pretty sure you would have witnessed it during this uh, particular time. Physical infra, definitely you don't have to worry about it. Uh, uh, the infrastructure comes at a premium cost. Per square foot area, obviously we know how expensive it is. So instead of you know dumping all your records over there, you just you know, uh, discard all those things and move completely on to digital. And the entire thing on terms of so regulatory compliance, uh, the system will allow you to give you, uh, as I said, in, in terms of the health check of, you know, how ready are you in terms of information and you can govern that. Okay. These are this is all of the screenshots that we have. Uh, one of the interesting pieces, you know, that uh, we have is also the mobile app, which literally comes really handy. And it's cross-platform, so you know, in, in case you want information on the go, on the fly, directly you just uh, have the mobile login through it and get the information directly. And in fact, uh, for the senior management, we have seen you know many companies are actually approving the documents as well online. You want to share the document via some WhatsApp or some other platform, you, that also you can do it. It's completely controlled and secured platform. That uh, these are some of the use cases uh, that, uh, just to give you an idea, uh, because many times people use DMS as a standalone system, but in case you have an infra around, you know, there are several applications that you work on. So many companies, organizations that we have seen that, you know, DMS becomes a core engine and the documents reside only at one central repository because the backup and everything happens over there. And the data comes into a DMS, the documents comes into a DMS and resides it. And you can integrate DMS with any other applications. So those API services really comes uh, handy in terms of managing the data. Yeah. Uh, so these are uh, some of the you know, uh, platform uh, components that we use typically when we are building a digital platform or when we are giving it. One classic piece that I'll just show it to you, AI ML base that we recently uh, done with uh, one of our clients, wherein you scan the documents. I'll just show you that part, wherein you scan a document or you have documents which are coming in from various sources. So we can, through our AI ML based uh, tools, we can train our data in such a way that it will identify if this particular data is an invoice or if that particular data is a packing list or others. So this particular use case that I'll show it to you, we uh, you know we have developed it for identification of invoices and packing list and splitting into multiple documents. Okay. So I'll just uh, all right. So uh, this is uh, I hope you all can see the video. Uh, Raki, can you see the video? Uh, probably you can see the video. Yeah. Okay. We can see. Go ahead. Can see so this now. Yeah. This, this particular dashboard. Okay, this is just a UI that we have uh, built in. Okay, so I now as a user, I am uploading one particular document. Okay, so this is let me upload one document to show you. Okay. Okay. So these are various documents that you can see I have uploaded out here. This I just upload multiple documents. This is a sample invoice copy. Okay, so these are some of the cases. Okay, so here I'll show you by uploading one document only, one invoice, and how it is identifying it. Now, as you can see, the category column that you see, this is where the system has been able to identify that it's an invoice copy, and which page number out of the document is an invoice copy. So here we, are using a machine learning thing, we, uh, you know, we were able to identify that part. Now I'll try and upload a certain other documents as well. I'll show you 
multiple parts. So here we uploaded one document. Here I'm uploading all the documents. And as you can see, the nomenclature of the documents also is varying. Okay, it's just random documents that any user can upload it. But after you upload those seven documents, now instantly our system has been able to identify, as you can see, for the third invoice, there are invoice and there are other documents as well. Okay, so if I click on it, now here I have page wise bifurcation. Page number one is other. Page number two is an invoice copy. Page number three again is an invoice. So if I click on it directly, I'll be able to see. See, this is a certificate of origin. This is not an invoice copy. So it has split as a different document. If I click on the second one, this will be my invoice copy. So here I'll be able to view it separate. Now, this is just to give you an idea in terms of how the classification happen okay, on the invoices. But the same application area can be extended to any other department as well. Let's take an example of HR. Now, human resources also, you work on several documents like CV, resume, certificates, and so on and so forth. So those kind of classifications and also extraction of data. So it's just not extracting it, uh, so not only classifying it, but also extracting the content from that invoice, invoice number, invoice date, amount, and giving you the data, which can be used by you or further. And obviously, so we, reports is uh, you know forms a major one of the major uh, application areas. So obviously, you talk about senior management, they will have like I need a consolidated dashboard to view what all documents are there, what all documents are missing. So I just quickly show you one page which gives you the idea of the missing document report. See this. So it's it's like, and as I was mentioning, you know, you want to know the completeness of file. So the system will actually throw alerts to you and, uh, and give you a report like this, where it tells you against in your company, in this department, which all documents are missing against a particular transaction or a must. So this is also one of the key, uh, you know, uh, applications that you users uh one of some of clients are using so i think we are conscious of time uh we're coming to just five minutes is left uh, so uh, uh we had a few more slides to show but i think uh we'll wrap it up and and maybe uh see if there are any questions that we can answer um uh, so abu would you do you like to uh, take take it up? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think like uh, two slides are there that uh, Kapil can show that. Then after that, uh, if any recipient is having any question, then we can take it up. Um, so if, if if there are any questions, we'll be happy to take it at this point in time since we yeah. have a sure. one hour slot. Yeah. yeah. So okay. if, if anyone has any questions, uh, please, please do let us know. Okay, so so Nimisha, is there anything from your end that you want to convey, or shall can we, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, conclude the session? So uh, yeah, yeah, yes, uh, yeah. So I think you yeah, have. I think that's Nimisha. We can conclude the session, and then we will request the recipient that if they have any question, question. that they can also put in our feedback form, and then that we can address accordingly. Hi, we are not able to hear. Uh, is that is there anyone speaking? Yeah, right yeah. yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes we can yes, hear we can. you. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm saying like uh, we will be sending, of course, this video as well as the feedback uh, form to all the res uh, res uh, Participant. participants, and uh, whatever the feedback will be there, and if any question is there, we will address accordingly. So I think uh, we can wrap up the session. And uh, thank you very much uh, to Srikant and Kapil for this wonderful presentation. That was, of course, like informative and very well designed, very engaging. And thank you very much to all the participants who took their time out to have this presentation, to participate in this presentation. And we look forward for your feedback and questions to 
look into further. So thank you very much, all of you. Thanks a lot again. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you, thank you everyone, for taking time out. Uh, uh, we enjoyed thank presenting. You. I hope so you you were equally engaged and uh, like yes. what you see. And yeah. we'll be happy to uh, you know uh, answer any questions so that that. Sure. Sure. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you. you.